The Isle of Man is a special place. I lived there for the first 33 years of my life. To me, it will always be home. Thirty odd thousand to forty thousand people arrive with about twenty thousand motorbikes, and the place is heaven. Wherever you go, there's bikes, or there's people walking around with leather jackets and pants on, and carrying helmets and all sorts. But it feels alive, and that's why I like to go there. I don't think, unless you can experience it, that I can actually tell you in words. CT Radio, fueled by Monster Energy. Good afternoon and welcome back to the TT Grandstand and to Attention Paddock, which should be your preview show. Obviously, we know today's schedule has joined all those other days and being lost. We arrived on the Saturday and when Mike met us at the airport, I think it was raining the Saturday night we arrived and he said it had been like that all week so they hardly got any practice in so we didn't even know if they were going to be racing on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday or what because they have to get a certain amount of practice in before they can race. I was looking at the weather forecast in bed at four o'clock in the morning. Ah, uh, I just thought we've come all this way and we may not even see a race. So we were hoping that the weather was going to stay fine and if it doesn't what they tend to do is reduce the number of laps. They still race, but instead of a four lap or a six lap race, they'll make a four lap or two lapper. But they have to get the racing in that week. So they have to make them decisions. It's been a messy week, hasn't it, at best, John? It has, yeah. I mean, as you say, I mean, I've been doing this for 30 odd years now and I can't remember really at practice we like it nobody would want uh, Gary Thompson's job as clerk of the course at the moment would they Kyle you certainly wouldn't want to be in, in Gary's shoes that's for sure and hopefully they get the break that he needs and, and, and maybe the, the, the weather will take a turn for the better soon Good morning, good Monday morning at TT 2019, fueled by Monster Energy. The sun is shining at the TT Grandstand and we are ready to go racing, finally, at TT 2019. I always stay with Mike because Mike's my, uh, my brother, he's my only brother now. Oh, he gets excited. He says he doesn't, but he does. And where does he live in relation to uh, the TT course? I think there's virtually on it. Then we can just walk down the road through a camping field, and then we're at the we're at the race. Massive crowds as well around the TT course, ready, anticipating this. With it being deprived, we're like kids in a sweet shop. Then you go kind of across a ploughed field and then you get to the wall, but you're right on the road. We were all just leaning against the fence waiting for it. Everybody's got that anticipation. And then you see them first bikes come and then it is... Dean Harris.
Harrison and Peter Heckman virtually can't be separated at the bungalow. 0.045 of a second. There is absolutely nothing in this race. It's a Kawasaki versus BMW versus Honda battle here at the front. So Peter Hickman is the new race leader. And the Monster Energy Super Sport winner on a triumph, now a four-time TT winner, Peter Hickman! Good morning and welcome to a dry and bright TT Grandstand ahead of what will be, we hope, an action-packed day at the Alderman TT races fueled by Monster Energy. Five races, something that's never been attempted before in TT history is what the organisers will try to do today to get this schedule back on track ahead of senior race day tomorrow. So Wednesday comes along, weather is beautiful. Steve rings up and says, I've got the perfect spot, we can get it inside the course to his mate's um, parents' house, right at the bottom of Bray Hill, and it's called Ago's Leap. And when you go Ago's Leap, it's because the bikes go right up on their back wheel. I'm, I've, I mean, I haven't been, I've lived on the Isle of Man for 30 years, and now I'm back, and I've never ever watched them there. So off we go, and we drive down, and we had to walk, I don't know, half a K round the back of these houses, up over bloody gates and stuff. up through the back garden. We've got step ladders, we've got stools, we've got everything. We get into the front garden where we can right on the course and we're like, how good is this? We are right at Ago's Leap. You couldn't get any better. Popping our heads around the the, uh, the pillar that was there. Then we hear the siren. We know now a, a minute away. And then they come. And the noise is phenomenal. Everybody's like, wow, wow, wow. One and a half seconds the gap Dean Harrison number two still leads from ten Peter Hickman at the bungalow within third Connor Cummins who's four seconds down on Hickman in fourth place number five James Hillier eleven seconds gone out now <laughs> The clock continues to tick, tick, tick away here. Is he going to do it in time? Is he going to do it in time? The checkered flag is away. That was a nice one. Yeah, that was a nice one. And Hickman takes the victory. It was unbelievable. Good morning from a sunlit TT grandstand on senior race day at the Isle of Man TT races fueled by Monster Energy. This is Attention Paddock brought to you by RST on the only bank holiday anywhere in the world designed for road racing. 
We're all about one race today, the Blue Riband race of the TT races, the Senior TT, which we hope to get underway at 10 o'clock. So Friday comes along, it's Senior race day. The weather was touch and go where it was, and we really wanted to get the tram up to Snaefell, but you're kind of trapped if you do that. So Steve comes along, we decided, right, let's go up to uh, Brandywell, because from Brandywell we can actually see uh, Snaefell, the bungalow, we see them coming round, and then you can see them all the way up the mountain and going around all the corners heading towards Windy Corner. Got a great spot to park, and then off we go tramping across the fields to get to the road. And I think we were all there, the whole family was there, so... Um, but we did walk between a few different spots because that's what you can do. You're inside the course, you can go further down, you can go further up the road, and you can even go higher up the mountain and look down. You're further away, but you can look down and you can get a panoramic view of the race. And And while we're waiting, we're listening to the radio. Connor Cummins still going well, but nine seconds down now. We know they're going to be, within five minutes, they're going to be with us. As they go through the bungalow, they climb up towards the Brandywell. Then we look over the mountain, the helicopter arrives. Once that helicopter, which is filming the TT, is coming, you know you've got about a minute and they're going to be there. <laughs> the mountain to the highest point at Brandywell and then start the descent down to the start finish. As they break the beam up at the bungalow, Hickman leads. How many times have we said that? As they make the climb over the mountain, this is going to be some last lap. The helicopter is overhead, the second flag is ready, it's Dean Harrison, a third TT win, oh he's so happy. On the last lap, it's a tradition that when the leader comes through, and really the top ten it is, come through, everybody waves their programme and claps them to say, well done, you've survived and you've given us a great show. People can't believe how close they can get to seeing the actual bikes and stuff and seeing what happens behind the scenes. And you know, so that's one of the, I think the great things about the Isle of Man is that it, there's so much open access to everything. How fast do you reckon the bikes are going? And how close can you get to them? Well, you get within a yard or so of them. I mean, we were at the bottom of Bray Hill one day and they were hitting 170 miles an hour, which is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Can you imagine that on a motorbike and on a narrow road? Unbelievable. Everybody has their different opinion of it, like, but it's, you know, you hear, oh, it's too dangerous, it's too this, too that. From old women to old men to young kids, everybody just gets so excited. And that's what it's like, it's like the island becomes excited. It's a different world, and until you experience it, I don't think you'll ever know. See it on the TV and you go, wow, they're mad bastards. But when you actually see it, you go, wow, they are mad bastards. 